What if you could supercharge your LLM prompts without writing a single line of extra text? Today, I'm introducing you to Model Context Protocol, or MCP, the secret weapon that lets you communicate with AI by adding extra functionality. Whether you're building advanced applications or just want more precise responses, this is the missing piece that will transform how you interact with AI. Let's dive in and unlock the full potential of your prompts. All right, so I'm gonna leave you with this link with the modelcontextprotocol.io. This is a really good site to dive in and start to learn everything you need to know about uh, MCP, including all the SDKs. So if you wanna start building out model context protocol servers, uh, these SDKs will help you out. Uh, we're not gonna dive into that today, uh, but this will kind of be an introduction to MCP. And then in the, a follow-up video, we'll go ahead and build out some MCP servers. Now you notice the different SDKs here, one of which is the Java SDK. Really exciting that this, the official Java SDK for MCP was contributed by the Spring team. Uh, so if you wanna go ahead and check that out, you can. So um, you can get into an introduction, quick start, example servers, example clients. A uh, really good place to kind of dive in. But I want to start here. Uh, something I kind of created to kind of help me out and hopefully it'll help you out. So let's start with why MCP. So if we talk about large language models, we know that they're pre-trained on vast amounts of data. We know that there is a knowledge cutoff date. You can ask an LLM like Claude or ChatGPT. You could say, hey, what is your knowledge cutoff date? And it will tell you. So it only has information up to that day. It has no access to real-time data or events, no access to your documents, no access to your local machine. Most of the time that might be okay, but in certain situations you might need these certain things. So let's take a look at two different scenarios. One is, hey, I go over to the website claude.ai or chatgpt.com and I go ahead and type in a message. If I ask it something that I think it'll know, how many states are in the United States, it will easily give me that answer. But if I ask it for real-time data or real-time events or something past its knowledge cutoff, it's not going to know. So if I say, what's the current weather? Say, I have no idea. Well, where are you? What, what day is it? I don't know what the current weather is. I can't answer that question. So that's one scenario. Another scenario is you're building an application or an agent, and this uh, AI-powered AI application needs access to data in another data set somewhere. So your application might connect to GitHub or Slack or some microservice in your organization, and you have to figure out how you're going to do that. You probably write your own integrations into each of these things, right? And not only that, but you're writing these integrations, other teams in your organization might be writing the same integrations, and uh, we're just kind of duplicating a lot of effort there. So this is the problem that we're trying to solve. And how do we solve it? This is Model Context Protocol, or MCP, which is a framework for enhancing interactions between AI models and external data sources or tools. So we have this large language model, which will communicate to the MCP protocol. This you can think about kind of like USB, where USB is a protocol. If we didn't have USB, every device that we'd plug in ha would have some type of different plug, and it would be a huge pain in the butt, right? So we came up with this USB protocol, and now kind of everything follows that. And that's what MCP is trying to be here. It's trying to be a protocol that large language models can talk to. This is from Anthropic. This was started by Anthropic, but it's not just for Claude. Any large language model can use it. So it's a protocol that defines how a large language model will communicate with other data sets. So I need to talk to some real-time API to get me the current weather. I need to communicate with a database. I need to do a web search to get up-to-date information. I need to look at some personal or private documentation. Uh, I need that context to be able to answer whatever query you're giving to me. So that is what the protocol is going to define. And so how does it work? Well, there's a client and a server. So a client is something that is able to plug in these MCP servers and communicate with them. 
There are a bunch out there. I'm just going to mention a few right now, but uh, if you're using Claude Desktop, so not the website, there's a desktop ap application, you can go ahead and plug servers into this. So for example, if we look at our example servers, the first one here is a file system, secure file operations with configurable access controls. So now if I have a client like the Claude Desktop, I can plug in a server like the file system, and now I can give Claude Desktop access to my file system. So before this, if I wanted to ask a question like how many files are in my downloads folder, it would have no idea, right? But now if we give it access to the file system, now it could start to answer those questions. And I know that's kind of a trivial example, but really the building block of everything we're trying to do here. Other clients include Claude Code, which has recently been released. Pretty cool tool that allows you from the command line uh, to go ahead and examine a folder and do some things in there, like ask questions about your repo. Um, you can plug MCP servers into this. And then some of the larger kind of AI workflow uh, IDEs, like Cursor and Windsurf, have the ability to plug in MCP servers as well. So you see I have a bunch of example servers out there. Um, this is from the documentation that I just showed you before. But there are tons and tons of MCP servers out there. There are whole directories, awesome MPC servers, um, directories of all these different servers that have been popping up because it's pretty new, but it is really quickly becoming the standard of how we build these kind of tools for the LMs to have access to. So that's kind of uh, my kind of big overview of, hey, why MCP? What problem are we trying to solve? What is it and how does it work? Uh, so with that, let's take a look at a real world example by uh, taking a look at Claude Desktop. All right, so here I have my Claude Desktop app and from here I can use it just like I would the web application. I can come in and ask it questions. Like I said, if I ask it something I know the answer to, I'm pretty sure I'll get the right answer. But what if I start asking it questions that it may not have information about. So there's a new TV show out, uh, Daredevil Born Again, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't have access to this, so I want to ask it some current information. How many uh, Daredevil Born Again episodes are available? Right. So it's going to ask it that, and it's going to say, hey, my cutoff is October 24, 2024. This was still in production and has not let, yet been released on Disney+. Plus. The series was expected to premiere in March 2025, which should be right around now. So it understands that it's just not trained on that data. It doesn't have an answer to that. And so if we go back, I'm going to, uh, we'll actually come back to here and we'll go here. Um, we don't have the tools to be able to support that. All right, we're going to switch over to users, Vega, library, application, support. And in here, there should be a Claude directory. So yes, uh, this is Claude desktop. And if we look in here, there is going to be a file here called Claude underscore desktop underscore config dot JSON. If you don't have this, which you probably won't if you haven't done this before, you just need to create that file. Uh, and with that, we can go ahead and open this up in, uh, I'll use Visual Studio Code, and you'll see that right now it's empty. Now, where I'm getting this from, actually, let's do this together. Let's go back to the browser and go back to the documentation. If we look at example MCP servers, we can see a list of servers. Um, we can see things like the file system. So we go ahead and click on file system. It will take you over that. This is the model context protocol directory of servers. Again, there are other directories out there kind of showing you all the different MCP servers out there. But this one kind of explains that, hey, this is a Node.js server implementing uh, MCP for file system operations. It can read and write files, create list and delete directories, and so on. So you'll see the different tools, and this is important when we kind of fire this up, we'll see these tools available in Claude Desktop. Um, and then you have to figure out how to install it. You can install it via Docker. Um, in this case, I have Node installed, so I can run MPX. So this is uh, an easy way to go ahead and get it installed. So I just copy this from here, go back to Visual Studio Code, 
and I say, um, here's my MCP servers. This is how it runs the file system. So with that, um, in that file, I should be able to go back here. I'm gonna close Claude desktop and I'm going to fire it back up. Oops, um, we forgot something. I just pasted in exactly what was in there, which is not what we wanna do. Um, so I want to say users vega dev, and let's say users vega uh, downloads. So I have a downloads one. Okay, so that should give it the correct access. Let's go ahead and close this again. And we'll go ahead and rerun our Claude desktop. And now you see no errors. And over here we have this little hammer icon and we have this little uh, kind of plug. And this plug is saying, hey, we have installed some MP MCP servers. And if you look under here, we have secure file system server and this is the version. If we click on this hammer, this is our MCP tools available. So that one MCP server gave us a whole bunch of tools to be able to create, edit, get information, list directories, move files, write files, et cetera. Okay, so now this one alone is not going to answer that daredevil question we just had, but I could say, um, how many files do I have in my downloads folder? Just give me the number. I don't wanna actually like list out everything. It's gonna do that behind the scenes, hopefully. So now you see it needs access to this. We're gonna go ahead and allow for this chat. So it is going to uh, check for that. We're giving this access to downloads and it says, hey, you have 98 files in your downloads folder. So pretty cool. Um, so now I'm gonna add another one. I'm gonna kind of do this off screen because it has an API key. But one of these is the ability to add a Brave search. So Brave search will just kind of add search functionality to as an MCP server. So if you go over to Brave and, and sign up for an account, you have to put a credit card in, but you get like 2,000 free credits for their AI. Once you have an API key, um, you'll be able to get access to Brave search. So I just added that. I'm going to relaunch Claude. And again, I just found Brave Search in that list of servers. You can see now if we go here, we have a couple of uh, MCP servers installed, one of which is the um, Brave Search. And if we go over here, we can do things like Brave Local Search or Brave Web Search. So I'm gonna ask it that same question. Uh, how many episodes of Daredevil born again are available. And now when we do this, um, it's basically gonna say, I don't have information of that, but we should be able to go out and um, search that. Now, sometimes it will do that on its own. Can you search for this info? Sometimes you have to say, like sometimes I prefix it for with search uh, and it will do that for me as well. So now it's just searching, it's using Brave to do that. Here's what I can tell you about it as of today, and it knows today's date, which is good. The show premiered on March 4th, 2025, uh, the third episode. So now we know that there is um, three episodes of it, and it kind of tells us uh, when these things are gonna be released and how many total episodes will be in uh, this show. So pretty cool stuff. I think really that's all I wanted to show. Again, MCP is allowing you to add tools to different clients. So some of those clients could be Claude Desktop, could be Cursor, could be Windsurf. MCP is allowing us to add all these different types of servers without having to rewrite this functionality. So I don't need to write my own file system MCP server, there's one already available. Something we might do all the time is talk to Git. I don't need to write a Git MCP server, one already exists, I just gotta plug in my credentials. GitHub, Brave Web Search, Slack, Google, etc. 
So again, kind of standardizing the way that we add functionality to these different LLMs. And I think uh, MCP is really hot right now. I think it's here to stay. And I think it's something that you should kind of add uh, to the list of things that you should be learning right now because MCP is, is going to be pretty big. Um, so, hey, I hope you uh, really enjoyed this introduction. We are going to follow this up with uh, some examples in Java and Spring on how to build your own MCP servers. But I thought this was just a good way to kind of get us introduced to MCP, how we could take advantage of it. And we'll have some fun actually writing some code and building our own MCP servers in the next few videos. Hey, with that, if you learned something new today, friends, do me a big favor, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding. Every, 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 every.